So just a couple weeks ago now, I posted my deep dive into the birth of sim racing and the first racing simulator, Revs, for the BBC Micro, written by Jeff Crammond and released in 1984. The sim was a milestone and a launching point for the genre, putting the player in the cockpit of a Formula 3 car around Silverstone against competent AI with realistic racing physics. I'm not going to recap the whole video here because I cover it quite extensively, I think. While I was preparing for the video and playing all the different versions of Revs, I actually did get my modern Fanatec CSL wheel hooked up to the BBC Micro emulator to play Revs with. One of the most impressive features that Jeff Crammond was able to code into Revs was analog joystick support. And you have to understand, and I make a point of this in the full video too, that analog joysticks were really just something in the arcades. Very few people, if any, actually owned one at home. But the BBC Micro itself actually did support analog joysticks. And although it's nothing like a steering wheel, what that means is you can actually have smooth input on the steering axis. And so hooking something up like a driving wheel is actually possible with modern technology. I thought it'd be fun to do a quick video to show off what the experience is like racing The Simpsons. I didn't really race it too much in the video. And to show folks what it handles like with a modern wheel, because I feel like it highlights how impressive the physics were for something that's over 35 years old at this point. So to set this up, I used a couple extra programs, which actually come in handy for a lot of different things, and I use them quite a bit to get different games working. Uh, the first of those is called VJoy. It's what you're seeing here. It stands for Virtual Joystick, I believe, uh, and allows you to create a fake joystick or an emulated joystick. And this is important, especially if you use a lot of different controllers. These old games or the interfaces that allow you to play with them uh, sometimes only allow very specific types of joysticks. And so if you have multiple controllers or different types of access assignment and things and supported, uh, you probably won't get very far. So this allows us to create a fake joystick and I have a very simple joystick created here. That's a two axis joystick, just an X and a Y axis. Uh, I have 32 buttons enabled, although we only need one for revs itself. Uh, and this program lets you do a whole bunch of things that I'm not actually aware of, but what it looks like after you get it set up in your game controller screen, you can see my three actual devices here. I've got some modded G25 pedals that I use. I've got CSL Elite wheelbase and my gear shift, which we won't use at all for this, unfortunately. But in addition to the controllers showing up themselves, I also have this additional device, uh, which is what we can use to assign all my different controllers to one fake emulated joystick and then map that in the games. That brings in the second main program you need for this, the Universal Joystick Remapper, UJR. This is a complex program, and I certainly don't know everything about it, but the high level is it lets you map different commands, different controls uh, to different axes. And so we can actually create and use our VJoy uh, joystick and assign controls from our other controllers to it. And so I've got very basic setup here, but uh, you can see I have stick two assigned, which is the one I have uh, in the VJoy program and then I've got my X and Y axes set up. Uh, you have to kind of play around, at least for what I know, to understand what the stick IDs are. But for example, stick ID 4 is my steering wheel, so you can see I can move it here. Uh, and then I've got that set to the physical axis of 1 for my VJoy joystick. So it remaps my CSL to the VJoy joystick as the X axis. And then we come down to uh, the Y axis, and this one's a bit more complex because this is where my pedals get going. The Y axis would be the forward and backward on a conventional joystick, what you would have used with revs. Uh, so I've got my throttle pedal here mapped uh, for one of the controls, and that's gonna be going to physical axis two. It's from my uh, second joystick, uh, and it's on the Y axis here. And I have it set as split H mode, because over in second page of axes, I have a merge set up for uh, same controller, axis two, but uh, the, the first axis on the controller, which is my brake pedal. So. This might seem kind of confusing, it's honestly pretty confusing to me, but what it equals out to is that my gas pedal and my brake pedal here end up being the Y axis kind of split down the middle, which is exactly what you need uh, for this type of controller. The conventional controls for revs are forward and backward on a joystick to do the acceleration and braking, and then left and right to do the turning. So it's a lot of different settings and a little bit confusing, but what it ultimately means is if I go back into my game controllers and take a look at the uh, properties for my VJoy device, we end up seeing what looks like a simple joystick control here. And if I push my throttle pedal forward, we'll be going forward on the Y axis. If I push my brake pedal in, we'll be going backwards on the Y axis. And then my steering wheel will go left and right. And so it looks like one joystick to the game, but it's actually two different controllers uh, that I have input here. 
Lastly, the joystick for the BBC Micro actually has a single button on it, which Rev's used as the shifting control. So I've actually mapped my right paddle. Uh, you can see the button one highlighting there. So that gets me the shifting. It's a really weird system. Uh, when you use the keyboard in Rev's, you can actually use two different keys to upshift and downshift. But with the steering wheel uh, and then with the joystick for the game, you just have one button. When you press the throttle and you pull the shift button, it'll upshift. Uh, and if you're pressing on the brake or no throttle and you pull the shift button, it'll downshift. It's a little bit weird, but once you get used to it, it's not that bad. All right, so now that I've got everything hooked up, we can go ahead and try it out. And for this, I'm gonna use an emulator called BeebM, uh, which is one of the two, I think, major BBC Micro emulators. Uh, but it does a great job at emulating all the different games, runs pretty much at full speed, uh, and is a little bit easier to configure on the joystick front. So this emulator itself really has no settings for joysticks. You won't be able to see this too well, but all you have to do is enable the joystick. As long as the joystick we configured with VJoy is the first one uh, and the X and Y axis and button work like we said they do, it should all just work. At least that's what it did for me. But I'll go ahead and load up revs. All right, we'll play just the classic version, the original version of Revs, maybe do a race or two here, uh, but we'll go through the typical pages of <laughs> explanation on what you have to do. It's amazing they put the instructions right up front, but it is a complex game, so it's probably handy to have those uh, if you had a bootleg copy or something like that. Get through the rest of these. Something to note, the controls are different when you enable the joystick, and you actually do have to enable it. There we go, Revs by Acornsoft. And we'll do a competition, so that'll be both qualifying and a race. Uh, and I'll try amateur mode. I've been racing mostly on novice, but I can pretty easily, in most cases, win the novice race if I get through the start. So we'll see how I do with amateur now. Maybe have a good fight. Um, we'll do just a, a five minute qualifying session here. And we'll name our driver Rich Axelson, which just about fits on the, uh, the max amount of characters. Uh, and so this is the main setup part of the game. You get to pick your wing settings. The manual and all the resources out there, especially if it's your first time, tell you to do max rear wing, which would be 40, uh, and then 32 for the front wing. But if you want the super pro setup, at least what I've found is that 28 rear wing and 16 front wing seem to work best. Still lie to turn the car without spinning out too easily, but it is a little easier to spin, so you definitely have to get used to it. All right, so here we are in the pits and we got to turn on the joystick controls actually. So we hit shift F2 and that'll get our wheel to uh, actually turn the on-screen wheel. And you, hopefully you can see it in the video since I'm filming the screen, but um, on the steering wheel itself, a little black line in the middle shows where you're turning. Very helpful for the keyboard, not as necessary for the wheel, but shows you there is quite a bit of a delay. So if I turn to the right, uh, I don't know how long that is of a delay, but it's certainly <laughs> quite a bit. There's also a bit of a dead zone in the middle, which I think you could probably tune out with the joystick remap or tweaking some of the settings, but you get used to it after a little while. And it's not that strange for older games to be like that. It's just cool that there's analog uh, steering overall. All right, so we'll get out of the pits and go to qualify since we don't have too much time. So we actually have to start the car, pull down the T key. And the throttle and brake themselves, they're actually digital, so it's just an on and off, although there's a bit of a, I don't know what he's coded in there, some kind of delay to make it ramp a little more smoothly. Uh, but you gotta remember that, the steering is smooth, but the throttle and brake are actually just on or off. Uh, but we'll pull out of the pits, and uh, yeah, the weirdest thing to get used to here, besides <laughs> the graphics and everything, is the shifting. So, if I'm holding down the throttle, like I said a couple minutes ago, uh, and pull the shifting, which is on the right side here, uh, it'll it'll go up a gear if I'm off the throttle like I just did and I pull it again So we'll come through the woodcoat chicane here If I'm off the throttle or on the brake and I pull it that'll shift down So that's the weirdest part to get used to it's I think simply because joysticks just had one button and actually with the keyboard controls You do get both up shift and down shift so it's a pity you can't map to those just for the shifting buttons But one of the limitations of the game all right, so we'll come through maggots here and up to Beckett's. You've got to talk yourself through the circuit a bit, especially at first to recognize where you are since there's pretty much no scenery. 1984 graphics here. We'll go through Beckett's and then onto the hangar straight up here. Um, and if you need a reference in your mind for what the circuit is, since it is the older version of Silverstone, it's much like the version in like Grand Prix Legends or the older version that's in a set of Corsa itself. Down to the end of hangar straight though, fourth gear, 
just little markers on the braking zones and on the apexes of the corners that help you guide where you're supposed to turn in. You can see there's two white ones that'll come up on the left and then a red one, so you can kind of judge where you're supposed to turn or apex and everything based off that. But overall, it's like sim racing, <laughs> just like you'd expect it to be today, just with a lot older graphics and a little bit of messy control somewhat, but you can honestly get used to it. And if you really wanted to, I bet uh, you could be quite good at this. Come down to the Woodcoat Chicane. This won't be a terrible lap, actually. Keep it in fourth gear for the chicane. Try not to cut the curbs too much to launch you in the air if you do. I do have the steering degrees of rotation. That was a 130.5. I should be able to get into the 20s here. But I do have the steering degrees of rotation set pretty small. Uh, I think about 220 on the wheel uh, just to make it snappy because joysticks back then didn't move very far anyway. So you don't want a really high degrees of rotation. You have to move the wheel so much to get the car to turn. It's almost like controlling your steering ratio with that. A little wide through Beckett's again there. So we'll come onto the hangar straight. I actually have a car coming up behind me. It's probably the hardest thing about racing in this game is the actual racing part. Once you get a, a handle on the controls and get around the track, avoiding the other cars is kind of the tough part. Come to the end of Hangar Straight here, though. Into what is that Stowe corner? It's fourth gear. Should be able to keep it in fourth up here. For club. Just let off the throttle a little bit early. Oh, the car's coming around the outside. There he is. Oh, that's not good if I'm getting passed on my qualifying laps. Get it up to fifth. You want to shift around 5,600 RPMs, uh, which is a little lower than I was thinking originally because it revs much higher than that, but you don't get much power beyond it, which is, I think, accurate for the cars of the time, the F3 car. The Ralt coming to Woodcoat again. Ooh, cutting it quite close there in the chicane. Making it work. Come across the line. Oh, 129.3. So that is better, even though I got past. See what I can do here, though. Coming to cops. Oh, try not to run wide. Oh, no. Well, I'm not the only one that has run wide in that corner recently. If you hit the wall in qualifying, no big deal. It resets you back to right before Woodcoat. And uh, you can just try again. During the race, though, on amateur mode especially, that would be race over. We have to be ultra careful here. I'll slide in behind this red car. I do like that it places you right before the Woodcoat Chicane so that uh, you can start another flyer right away. All right, so we'll get it through the chicane here. Across the line, we're a little high on the RPM. So I got to beat a 129.3 to better my own lap right now. Up to fifth gear, come into Maggots. Flat out easily left-hander here. This Beckett's one of the harder corners on the circuit, I think, in this version anyway. Third gear, maybe. Maybe fourth if you're really brave or have higher downforce. It totally missed the apex, but we won't worry about that. Onto the hangar straight. I love how you can see it going up in the distance. The uh, elevation, although very minimal at Silverstone, was included in the game, which was a totally new feature really helps make the circuit feel more accurate. Not too bad there. Through Stowe, come up to Club Corner. Try to go a little faster on the entry. Ooh, cut it a little bit there, try not to spin out. If you cut it too much, the car will start spinning out. It does react, you know, somewhat believably in different places. You can't just crank on the wheel, you'll spin the car out. You can't cut chicanes. So all the same rules apply, even though it looks uh, quite, quite different from anything you'd be used to these days. Oh, not too bad of a run through Woodcoat there. Come across the line, much better lap, 128.2. There we go, much better line through Cops that time. But much like many of the reviews of the time, I had a ton of fun just hot lapping in this game, especially on the four tracks version where you have a few different circuits. Ooh, we're gonna run a bit wide. 
pretty ingenious, and maybe Jeff Crammon did it on purpose knowing him, but Silverstone is an easier track, you know, layout to master. And so it's a it's a good one that they included it as the first track, because Thruxton or Alton Park, some of the other tracks included Snatterton, uh, and the four tracks version, those tracks are much more difficult. It's not that they're any more or less accurate than the Silverstone here. They're on par, but those tracks themselves are just harder. So this one, nice and wide, mostly flat, uh, pretty easy corners. Come through, club then. I got another car coming up behind me. So I don't know where I'm going to qualify with the novice or amateur, I guess, second rung up AI. But we'll see. I was pretty easily able to get pole with the novice group uh, with like a 128. I think that would be pole. So I don't think I'll be last, but we might not be close to the front. Much better that time through Woodcote. Get up to fifth for just a second here before cops. We'll try not to run too wide there. We have just less than one minute to go in the qualifying, so I don't know if I'll be able to complete this lap coming to the end of the hangar straight here. We'll just try to stick on it. You don't have a proper countdown timer for the whole session, but it does tell you when there's less than one minute. Come through club there. Yeah, carrying the speed pretty well. The wing settings I have allow me to do that. As long as I remember when to shift the car. I come through Abbey there. Will we get through Woodcote in time? I don't know if you have a feeling it's going to stop me right before the finish line. I don't know if this lap's any better anyway, but I would like to see it. There we go, through Woodcote, very fast. Come to the line. Oh, it's going to be just slower. 128.8, but not such a bad qualifying overall. All right, so we finished the qualifying, and this is where you could do the pseudo multiplayer that it does. Uh, you can enter another another driver, give your friend the controls, and they can try to qualify. And then you kind of trade off doing a race um, against each other, but you're not really against each other, just one at a time. But a pretty cool feature to have, especially, I'm sure, as everybody was crowding around wanting to play this. Uh, but we'll actually go ahead and start the race. And we'll be doing amateur, like I said, which will be my first, I think, real amateur level race. But we'll see the qualifying results here. So Desmond Dash got the pole with a 125.6. So that's pretty quick. I don't think I've ever been that quick. I've definitely been in the 127s before. But Johnny Turbo in second, Max Throttle in third. You gotta love the names of the of the AI in this. Glorious slap back there. Uh, and Rich Axelson in ninth. So I'm right in the middle of the pack, which is exciting, but also will be difficult uh, to do well. So I just want to do a quick race, five lap race around Silverstone uh, and see how well I can do. Hopefully can avoid the other cars. That's the most difficult thing about this. All right, so we're on the grid and we actually have to start the car on the grid. Don't want to forget to do that. There we go. Got the lights on the right side there, whole grid in front. Lights are lit. Green, we're go. Oh, I was late on the shift there. All right, try to get away though. I'm gonna get passed by a few cars, spin the tires, get up the gears. Sometimes the gear doesn't want to go in, which who knows if it's the controls or what, but so frustrating off the line. Although everybody's cleared up a little bit. We'll go through cops, try not to run wide in the opening corner. We'll come down to Maggots. Maggots. So we've got about nine cars in front of me and might just want to hold the line through Beckett's here, although it would be tempting to fly up the inside. I've had many a race ended so far by that. Now, frame rate rise, I think the game definitely takes a dip uh, at the start of the race compared to when you're driving solo. So I got a car in my mirror or two distracting me. But um, it's, it's quite playable, and for the time... Having something that had this high of a frame rate was really impressive, and it was one of Jeff Crammon's goals in making it, you know, like I had pointed out. All right, we'll come to the end of Hangar Straight. I got around one of the cars. Don't really want to force it here. Ooh, on the inside, I'm going to get cut off there. Through Stowe. We'll keep it in fourth gear here for the next right. 
hopefully I can work my way up the positions here. Like I said, I haven't really done a race at this difficulty, so I don't know how difficult they ultimately are. Hopefully it won't be a boring one. Up to fifth gear. Ooh, we might be able to go to the inside here. It's tricky. Oh, <laughs> able to make the pass around the outside, too. I passed two of them, luckily. Past Max Throttle. I got Johnny Turbo in front of me now. We'll come down to Woodcoat. I'm on the inside again. Back out of it a little bit here. Down to fourth, down to third for the opening lap. Johnny Turbo is able to go back by me. Ooh, and have a car around the outside as well. Desmond Dash got around me. All right, that's not good. So I passed a few on the straightaways. Maybe my wings are better set up for the straight line. Easy to hit the apex early through cops and uh, run wide there, which is another place where I've had quite a few races ended. He's going to block me coming up into Beckett's here, though. Put it in third, trying not to run wide again. Oh, it didn't carve in. Oh, I got a car right in front of me there. I think I hit him just a little bit. Max throttle cutting me off. All right, we'll try to get a good run out on the hangar straight. Zigzag between the cars. Oh man, I'm so much faster in a straight line. So clearly that's the setup I got on. Passing a few cars up to fifth now. See if I can hold it. Coming into stow. Down to fourth. Oh, cars all over the place. Try not to run wide. I think they're going around the outside of me. <laughs> I haven't swapped positions so much yet in this. Usually you pass them and then, or you get past and then it's see you later. But they're quite good. It's, it is so amazing. I think contextualizing it is really important because I'm sure half the people that watch this will see about two seconds of it and, uh, turn away because obviously I'm not trying to fake myself that this looks amazing or anything but just for 1984 this must have been unreal to play at the time all right come down into wood coat Ooh, up the inside I really took a lot of grass there we'll come to the line we'll get three to go so not a bad couple of laps there I'm up to sixth now maybe I can get a top five would ultimately love the podium. Wide through cops, but carry a little bit of speed. Nice and easy through maggots. I'm down to Beckett's here. We'll keep it in fourth. I tried to grab third, but it didn't quite work out. Get it onto hangar straight. I can see the car in my left mirror. It kind of looks like static as it's in the mirror, just kind of flickering there. Hard to tell how close the car is, but the fact that you can see behind you at all is also amazing. <laughs> That's the, uh, the word for this whole game is amazing. Carried a lot of speed through Stowe that time. Pulling up on Johnny Turbo in front. Sticking behind him. All right, through club corner there. Come up to Abby. Maybe can get a run on the little straight before the Woodcoat chicane. Seems like I'm fast there as well. Try to stick it to the inside. Oh, he's going to come up and block me. Luckily, able to get around. I'm also going to pull up to Percy Veer here. <laughs> on the inside down to fourth gear, trying to carry a lot of speed through the chicane. Ooh, his Persevere's right there. Slam on the brakes. Need to get it down the gears. That's the one thing you can't do. Oh, and I'm going to lose a bunch of positions. If you get yourself up into a higher gear, you have to let off the throttle to shift uh, down to a, a higher gear. And not possible to do because you have to be pressing on the brake to be able to do it. So, kind of hurting myself there by missing the shifting point. Oh, and I'm losing so many positions. Got Davy Rocket coming by me. It's gonna cut me off. Ooh, don't wanna hit him. Go sliding into the grass. Alright, need to get a good run out of Beckett's this time. I lost so much time to everybody there. But should have a good run, although I don't think I'm gonna get up to them by Stowe. 
Certainly not the whole pack. I'll have to compromise my entry into Stowe on the inside here. Down to fourth. Ooh, side by side there. We'll keep it in fourth for club. Just touch the grass there. It slows you down a bit when you touch it. Up to fifth for Abby. I'll try the outside this time. Seem to fade out. Ooh, just around the outside of Davy Rocket. We'll get Gary Clipper as well. We're going to come to the line to get the one to go. Back up to seventh, at least right now. So recovering a little bit. Come through the Woodcoat chicane here. There we go. Come across the line. One to go. Desmond Dash in front. Back to seventh. Ooh, through cops. Got it into third, but ran a bit wide. Luckily able to get that downshift before I had to hit the throttle. Davy Rocket comes up the outside. He's going to cut me off. Coming into maggots. Ooh, don't spin me off the track. Oh, I'm very wide into Beckett's. Oh, no. Not again. Still got max throttle behind. But all the way back to ninth. Just like that. There's so much more competitive in this set of the AI. So I can't even imagine what the professional is like. But definitely, definitely challenging, I would imagine. There we go. Up the inside. Ooh, we touched. You can hear the sound effect and everything. Usually you go spinning off the track if that happens. I really lucked out there. Side by side with Gary Clipper, though. He's going to cut me off. Should be able to at least get him back here as we come towards the end of the lap. It's the Woodcoat Chicane that I'm really losing a ton of time on. We'll come through Abbey. Let him fade to the left. I'll go to the right. We're in fifth gear, flat out. There we get by Gary. See if I can go ultra late here into Woodcoat to keep in front of him. There we go. Just straight line it a bit. But come to the line. If I had done that on every lap, it would have been great. And finish the race. Man, So I think I netted out one position after all that. But pretty cool race. Very competitive. Definitely a lot more difficult. You can see Glorious Slap winning the race uh, from Willie Swerve. Persevere, Desmond Dash, Johnny Turbo, Huge Engine, uh, Davey Rocket finishing right in front of me. And then Rich Axelson up to eighth. So I gained one position overall. But whew, that's a workout. So just a little bit of fun to show off revs with a modern steering wheel. Uh, I think it really changes the appreciation for what's going on under the hood. Playing with a keyboard, playing with a conventional joystick is, uh, you know, it doesn't draw parallels to what we have today, but uh, I'm seeing a lot of the same things that I definitely saw in Sims that came out 10 years after that, IndyCar 2, uh, Grand Prix 2 even. Uh, those Sims, they're not that far away from what we were doing there, at least physics wise. Uh, just better feeling, better graphics, obviously the frame rate helps, but even to Sims of today. Of course, these days we got forced feedback. Uh, you've got amazing 3D environments, totally, you know, much better physics models, but the bones were there in revs. And what Jeff Grammon did was absolutely incredible. So playing it with a modern wheel made me appreciate that just a little bit more. And uh, hopefully some of you watching felt the same thing. So, so yeah, just a quick video to show what it's like to play revs with a modern steering wheel. I know some of the folks that watched my other video on it wanted to see some actual racing in it. So hopefully uh, that was interesting enough for you. So appreciate everybody watching. I'll see y'all again next time.